Well, after much frustration and anger and just overall overall bullshit throughout the course of these last two matches, we now reach our main event. Samoa Joe is going up against Lars Sullivan, a match that, to my knowledge, has not happened yet, not only in WWE, but in EBCW. And I will, I will arguably say... Joe was probably one of the more underrated champions. Not, actually, not even champions. Joe was probably one of the more underrated talents WWE has signed in quite some time. If there's any person on the WWE roster I believe is a legitimate killer, other than, you know, the usual guys like Brock Lesnar and so on, I would say Samoa Joe is a legit killer. Samoa Joe is not someone I would fuck with if I was in a back alley with him. If we're in a back alley, I'd be like, I'll just walk past and see, be like, Howdy do, sir, and just like, you know, walk fast away because I'd be fucking terrified of him. Laura Sullivan, on the other hand, I, I don't know what I, I don't know if I'd be me terrified of Laura Sullivan. I think the dude is like freaky large. Like he's abnormally large, and he's probably one of the biggest throwback. Excuse me. He probably has the, the most throwback look of any wrestler I've seen. Even when, um, even in, uh, NXT, when he first started coming out and debuting, I said to myself, dude, this guy is a fucking massive motherfucker. First of all, I didn't know God made people this, this big. Like, this dude is a, a literal big motherfucker. And on top of that, you just, if you just look at him, you look at his attire, he's like, he's like a throwback to the big men of the past. Like, you know, Big John Stud. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say Andre the Giant, but I, I could say Andre the Giant because Andre had that look as well. Like a big, imposing presence. Um, it's, it's something you just don't get anymore. It's, it's not something you see anymore, and that's not a knock on any smaller wrestler. It's just you don't see it so often that you have no choice but to call a look like this a throwback. It's crazy if you really think about it. Whatever happened to Lars Sullivan? I, last I heard, the guy was going through some like mental health issues. I'm not sure if he was any part of the laid-off wrestlers that WWE had, which I'm sure wouldn't wouldn't help his mental health either. Which is kind of sad because Lars Sullivan was a legit fucking. I liked Lars Sullivan in NXT. I think the second they brought him to the main roster, and of course all that personal shit that came out about him. That it's it hurt him. It really, really hurt him, and that's a damn shame. Because I thought Lars Sullivan, you know, was a fucking good. He was a good uh, addition. But here we are, main event: Samoa Joe versus Lars Sullivan. Let's do it. Oh shit! He punched me first. Oh shit, Lars is coming out to fucking play, man. Last time we saw Lars Sullivan, it was his debut match in the uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Where he faced Booker T and eventually lost, I think he lost to Booker T. Um, I don't know the outcome of that match because that was a long time ago, but... Either way, he was that was his debut. I'm like 90% sure he lost. Oh shit, that's not going to be good. Ow. Oh fuck. See, this is what I'm talking about. The fucking movement speed of these characters are like, you can't react to anything they do. Like, that knee to the corner of the face, and that was a nice little funny glitch there. Um, I could not react to that, because I didn't see, I didn't expect him to fucking move that quick, one move to the next, like he just did. So. Now, my biggest challenge, I think, is going to be sending him up for the muscle buster or any, uh, anything. Of course, the Coquina Clutch is always an option, too, but I don't really uh, trust submissions all that much. Not, not even before they, in, they put in the new thing in 2K16. I didn't trust them at all to begin with. Like, it, it was really difficult on PlayStation 3 as well with the Breaking Point submission. And how they did it then. Scoop Slam there by uh, Samoa Joe. Sound a little bit nasally for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, oh shit! I don't know what he was going. Probably going for a belly to belly or overhead belly to belly, belly to back maybe. Failed epically. 
Oh, looks seems I have a trump card. Samoa Joe has a uh, a finisher icon that I can use and exploit. Fuck yeah. And you know, part of me realizes that in the Eric Young uh, match, and and not for nothing, these things are completely so fucking useless most of the time that I forget that they're even there, but I forgot to check to see if Eric Young had something like that. And because of that, I think I got, that's why I lost the No Way Jose match. So, obviously I'm not, you know, stoked that that happened. Again, inadvertently created two number one contenders. One I was trying to create, the other one just fucking happened. Now, we'll have to see if the result is the same come Extreme Rules, which is basically a, a fucking pay-per-view made for the Hardcore Championship. That was a... I don't know what Lars is doing. He hasn't fucking moved since he delivered that uh, battery gram of a fucking shoulder and elbow to my knee. Suplex there by Samoa Joe. The Samoan suplex machine, as he was once known as. I believe. Oh! I'm, I'm wrong. Excuse me. It was the Samoan submission machine. I knew it was one of those. Something that started with an S. Either way. What's his signature here? I think it's those... Yep. Uranagi. Who's Anagi? Uranagi. Uranagi's something that really isn't used much anymore, I don't think. Let's get that finisher going. Muscle Buster time. Big move. Bye-bye, Lars Sullivan. Rest in peace. What are you doing, you stupid bastard? There we go. There we go. I swear to God, I was going to be so upset if I didn't get that pinfall because that the the character did that. Nonetheless, Samoa Joe continues his path to destruction as we continue on. And uh, I got some ideas coming up for main event, guys. I have a. I think I might do a commentary on a recently announced WWE game that looks like fucking shit. So. At one point during main event, I'm going to be giving you guys a commentary. Whatever matches are there, are there. And until then, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for checking out EBCW Nitro. And again, uh, another thank you to you guys who checked out the Backlash pay-per-view. Backlash has been a staple of EBCW since, God, uh, 2K7, uh, since the 2K16 uh, season. Which, arguably, in my opinion, is one of the greatest Backlash cards of all time. That's just my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for that one more time. And I'll see you guys on main event. Have a great day, and peace out.